what's up everybody? It's your girl Amanda. Welcome to the Buzzed Artist, a channel where you can unlock your creativity and just let loose with some acrylic painting. And before we get started, just be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can see more videos in the future. Today we're going to jump into some galaxy painting and I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. Grab your paintbrushes, grab your waters, grab a towel, and join me. We're going to start to paint away. All right. So we are going to start. Um, I'm going to show you guys what paints that I'm using for this very beautiful um, galaxy painting. And I'm only going to be using four colors. So I'm going to be using black. This is just your regular Mars black. This is a... Uh, um, primary blue, this is a primary red, and this is just your regular titanium white, which you really can't see at all on the palette. <laughs> um, so there's only four colors, and I will be posting the name of the colors and where you can find them in the description below, okay? And I'll be using three types of brushes. I like to keep it simple. Uh, three is pretty much all you'll need. So you're going to need a, um, a wide brush. Just like this. Um, if you have a filber brush, that works just as well. I'm also going to be using a medium size brush that um, has kind of a square tip to it. I do enjoy using these types of brushes, especially when I need to do um, some surface coverage, but I want to get a hard edge. And then last but not least, I'm going to be using a small brush. Uh, this particular brush that I have is stiff, it's got, and it comes to a point and it's angled. This is a, a very good brush as well for more controlled uh, brush strokes. Hello, words. Okay, and I will also be posting the um, exact materials that I'm using in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Okay, so let's go and get started. All right, so the way I like to start with the galaxy painting is to start doing the sky first. So. To do the sky, um, you're going to be just having a ton of fun just playing around and splattering paint. That's that's pretty much the name of the game. And I'm going to move my camera a little bit so you can see um, the, the canvas a little better. Okay, so here's how we're going to start. I want you to take your uh, large brush, dip it in your paint water, get it nice and wet. And what we are going to start with we are going to start with just a very dark blue color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, I'm going to take it into my center of my palette here, and I'm going to take a little bit of black, okay? I don't want to take too much black. Black goes a long way. I'm just kind of taking a little bit like that, and I'm just going to combine it together. Basically, I just want to make like a really dark blue color. And this is it's a little too black, so I'm just going to add a bit more blue to this. Um, I want to create... <clears throat> ooh, excuse me. I'm going to create a, uh, a very dark looking sky. And then we're going to be eventually doing a lot more layers, one on top of the other. Okay? So my brush is nicely coated. And then, ooh, I'm also leaking. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to hold my brush like a pencil. If you guys have followed me in my previous videos, I always love holding my brush this way. I feel like I get more control. So especially for new uh, painters, this is a really great way to kind of get more comfortable with your brush. So I'm holding it like so. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my brush and very, very gently, just, you know, not, not really doing much to my to my canvas. I'm just going up and down with my brush and applying that paint. Okay. So I'm just going to my brush stroke is kind of like a curve. So I'm not like going down like this. I'm kind of following the uh the curve of the sky um and trying to get that that movement happening. And also don't forget to do the sides of your canvas as well. So you're going to be doing this brush stroke pretty much for the entirety like that's the entire like portion like from here up for the most part so just go ahead and copy that brush stroke now the canvas I'm using is a little different than the ones I've used in my previous videos uh, this one is slightly bigger I would say it's probably like 16 by 12 
inches long and um, it is pre-gessoed. So for, uh, for those of you who don't know what gessoing means, basically it's just a, a very diluted form of white acrylic uh, paint and it's used as a binding agent for your acrylic. So whenever you wanna gesso anything uh, that you wanna paint with acrylics, um, you are allowing the acrylic to adhere to the surface and not come off. And usually when you buy canvases, if you're looking for your regular kind of canvas, more likely than not, you'll find canvases that are already pre-gessoed. And I'll also include a, a link to this particular um, canvas in the description below so you guys can have that for reference. So I have to say, um, this kind of sky, it reminds me of when I, I went for a summer, I went to South Carolina and um, we went to the beach at night and it was absolutely gorgeous. The sky was just incredibly bedazzled with stars. And um, especially if you've lived in a city for a very long time, or just in a place that is, you know, has a lot of lights. It's very hard to see stars of that magnitude and of that, of that, like, of, of those, my goodness, English, hello, <laughs> that many stars in the sky. It was, it was just really cool to be able to see how many stars there really are up there. So this this is kind of like an ode to that to that time when I went to see the those stars in South Carolina. Shout out to anybody in South Carolina. Comment below where you're from. So we well I'm painting in my apartment in Niantic, Connecticut. So shout out to anybody in Connecticut or shout out to anybody anywhere that's tuning in. Comment below and let me know where you're from. I always love to meet new people and see where they're tuning in from. It's so cool. So I'm just taking my time. Applying the brushes. Going. So you got a pretty neat color going on here. I'm pretty excited about it. So the other day I went hiking with my friend and I could not get over how the leaves are starting to change colors and it's not even September yet. If you're watch, well, so the time that I'm filming this, it's just at the end of August. So this was kind of like, it was crazy because I didn't think leaves would change that early in the season here, but, um, they are, and I was actually very pumped and excited, but kind of like sort of sad, but not really, that summer was coming to a close. I love the fall. So comment below if you are a huge fall fan. I love the changing of the seasons. So I'm making sure to get the sides of my canvas here. This happens to be like a very thin, canvas so it doesn't have like the that stretched um, wood that has like that width in the side this is like it's like super super thin <laughs> so um, I do like using these um, because they are lighter they, they seem to not be as much of a burden um, although they are a little harder to hang up so um, Keep that in mind if you think about wanting to get this kind of canvas. Okay. So I'm kind of liking how I have the uh, sky here. I'm pretty satisfied with it. So what we're going to do next is I want to start making like a, a light lavender purple color. This is what makes the galaxy sky super cool. I'm going to take my brush, clean it. Okay, so dip it in your paint water, clean it. 
And what I'm going to take is I'm going to take my blue. And I'm going to take my red. We're going to make a I'm going to make that nice cool lavender uh purple rather. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Maybe like that much white. I'm going to add it to my palette. So it's going to make this really nice lavender color. Isn't that neat? You can always you can already see in like the palette itself here how the colors are starting to look like the night sky that I made prior. So what I'm gonna do is now that I have my color, I'm gonna take and use the same exact brush strokes that I used to make the sky here. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm not gonna cover the entire portion of my blue. I'm just gonna do it in, in spots. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my purple. So it might not be completely visible at first, and that's okay. You're just, you're gonna be layering and applying colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding my colors. I'm gonna go on the sides, on the tops. And I'm gonna mix a little bit more. Ah, now you can start to see it. So it takes a couple of layers sometimes to start to make the colors come out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of applying it in, in patches. So I'm just, I don't want to lose the blue underneath, but at the same time I want to start adding in those colors. Now I, the way I'm kind of blending is I'm just kind of taking my brush and doing really big strokes and carrying the color out into the blue that we just previously laid down. So I'm not afraid to cross the borders with my colors. And I've said this in my other, other videos too, a big mistake that, or a big, uh, I guess, hang up that a lot of beginner artists, especially people that are painting with acrylics, tend to run into is um, wanting all the colors to stay in one spot um, but then you, you actually feel like there's something wrong with the color scheme because they seem so separated and you're right. Um, when your colors are separated like that in the, in the event that you're trying to blend it, it looks weird. It looks unnatural. Blending is basically two colors, bl uh, going into each other. So when you're applying your purple here, I'm going into my blue and I'm not afraid to cross into it. Because what I can do is I know how to make that blue. If I want to add more blue, I just go back in and add the blue and crisscross the colors. And when they're wet, it's the perfect palette to go ahead and do all this. Now, one other thing I'm going to do. So as I'm doing this, I'm laying down my purple. I want to add uh, another kind of like flare, another little touch. All I'm going to do is just take a bit more white and I'm going to add it to the purple that we were already working with until you get like a like a very light, very, very light lavender. And I'm just gonna go in and just lay down that color. Now, this particular brush stroke that I'm using, I'm not really applying that much pressure to it. I'm actually just very lightly um, dragging my brush across the canvas, um, trying not to pull my color too, too much. I'm just very, very faintly grazing the canvas and laying down my color. So I'm going to do it on the, on the tops as well. So the, the thing that I'm doing here, I'm just like applying some, some paint and then just spreading it out. Just like a little thing that I like to do. I'm I'm a big like messy painter. I really do enjoy being very messy with my paints. <laughs> um, so I like to just experiment and use big brush strokes because right now you're you're not into the precise portions of your of your painting. Right now you're just kind of playing around with colors and trying to get the base going. So don't be afraid to just play. A little bit here. And again, you're going to be laying down a ton of colors 
So this is just like layer layer two, um, or, well actually layer three at this point that you're gonna be using. So there's always, blending is all about layering and adding more and more and more as you go along. Going in there, fanning it out with my paints. That's pretty cool, right? I'm just using the same exact brush strokes over and over and over again. Cool beans. So I'm going to show you one more layer that we'll put on top of here and I think we'll be done with our sky. I know this is like so quick, but it's uh, it's really not that hard to do these kind of skies, which is really fun and cool to know. So I'm not going to even bother uh, washing my brush because I'm lazy and it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take some red. I'm going to put it onto my palette because we're going to make like a light a light pink. And so I'm going to take white and add it to my red. And it's okay if you got some blue in there. Um, it's going to get blended with the blue that you have on your canvas already. So you're going to make this like really cool rose color. In the last video, I kept calling it rose gold, which was just kind of amusing. Now I'm going to make sure that I don't have globs of paint on my brush. So I'm just going to take my brush and kind of kind of squeegee it off. Just making sure I have just the right amount of paint. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to very gently, with the same strokes, apply this color. So I'm just going to start here and very gently apply my color. Now, something you want to keep in mind, it's very, I would say it's pretty important to do this while your paint is still wet, um, the, the one that you laid down prior because that is where you're going to get the most blending magic. And that's where you're going to see all the colors kind of mix into one another. And that's the really, really pretty part about all this. Now, the cool thing about this color is it doesn't happen all over. It's just, it's just in spots. So I'm not going to look to cover the entire blue of the sky that I laid down. But I'm just looking at, you know, different spots. So, you know, I'm going to add another one here. And again, I'm not applying much pressure. I'm just kind of skimming my canvas, making sure I got that color that I'm going for. And maybe some a little over here. How's that look? Ooh, that looks really cool. <laughs> it's always cool to see it like on a camera as well. It always looks very different. That's always a trick I tell a lot of uh, my students is if you're really not liking or if you really don't like how your painting is coming out, take a break, get away from it for a, for a while, look at it with a new lens later, literally or even take a picture of it and see what that looks like. Because for some reason, when you take a picture, you kind of remove yourself away from it all. And you know what? So I'm just looking at this now. I really like this, but I do want to add a bit more gravity to it. I do want to add more darker, um, darker tones to this. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and add, uh, some really like dark purple into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to take some blue, take some red. So we're going to make the color purple. And I'm going to add a ti the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest dip of black. Okay. I'm just going to add that in. It doesn't matter if it you take a little bit of that rose color that you had before. But you're going to be creating this like really, really cool dark purple, dark violet color. And I'm again, I'm going to squeegee off the excess paint. I don't want too much and very gently same how you were doing with the rose uh, sorry with the gold I know I'm doing it again excuse me not with the gold but the rose color you're just gonna go very gently with your brush and kind of add that color in okay 
Now this, I'm just doing this very gently and again it's really important to do this while your paint is wet because your colors will want to blend together and it will look a lot more natural and it will make a lot more sense for your sky. I really like to create those those like very kind of intense deep colors especially when it comes to like a galaxy sky you want to create those like very awe-inspiring deep colors <laughs> this kind of looks like the apple desktop when you're uh, <laughs> signing in, got like that galaxy, like, you know, that, that sound like boom. <laughs> yeah, you see this. So it, it's also a desktop. It looks like one. Right on. So this is the time now to just play around, go back and forth, back and forth. If you feel like, you know, you added that dark, but then you want to add back in that that lighter gold, uh, excuse me, rose color. Ah. <laughs> when you want to add in that lighter rose color like you were doing before, you can go ahead and do that. Your paint is nice and dry and ready to go. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and add just a bit more to that. And again, you want to do it gently, not too hard. that something okay now we are going to move on to our stars and that'll complete our sky our galaxy sky isn't that crazy you have already made the um, the basics of a sky and it's all gonna actually make sense when you put the stars in because the stars are this white color and white balances everything so um, what you're going to do is you're going to downgrade now to, or upgrade rather, with your medium sized brush. This brush is going to be your star maker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in water, get it nice and wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white. Okay, so I have my white. And what I'm going to do again is I'm going to dip it in my paint water again. I want to make sure it's nice and wet and drippable. Okay, that's very important. So, so the way we're gonna make our sky, our stars rather, is a splatter effect. Now we did this back with our unicorn power um, tutorial where we did the splatter effect with our brushes. So be sure to take all um, items that you don't want any splatter or paint on and move them out of the way. I have a, a nice little tablecloth here to help with spills. You might wanna wear a, uh, smock or some apron of some sort to cover yourself this is just my working clothes so it's not a big deal if i get it on me but it might be a big deal if you get it on you so protect yourself before you wreck yourself <laughs> okay so the way i'm going to hold my brush is i'm going to hold it because i'm because i'm right-handed i'm going to hold the uh, edge the um, end of my brush with my left hand and with my right hand with my finger i'm just gonna tap my brush and I'm gonna make this really cool multi-dimensional splatter that is gonna represent my stars. Isn't that cool? Can you kind of see what I'm doing over here? Let me just let me just dip this over here. Can you see that? Isn't that awesome? Ooh, can I can I keep it in this position for a second before it falls over? Okay. I'm telling you, it's really not that hard to do this kind of stuff. 
What's important is that you're having fun. That is the most important thing. Okay, and I always turn it over so I can add more. Cool. Now, in the painting that I have done before, I do like clumps of white to kind of show like kind of constellations and um, kind of like a uh, almost an indication of different star alignments. And the way I do that is I just splatter in one location and just kind of stay there. So I get all the white stars to clump together. So it kind of looks like a pattern of some sort. So I'm just gonna kind of hover around this one area and keep tapping, tapping, tapping. I'm trying to get a lot more white happening in this area. And you know what? I always say this, there's no way you can do this just with a brush stroke. Uh, it's, it'll take you forever. And I mean, unless you like that, unless you like to, you know, that's like a therapeutic thing and you want to just practice and make time, you know, millions and millions of little dots. I mean, that could be very therapeutic. I can understand that. So do you see how I'm just kind of congregating all the spots in one place? And I'm just reapplying my brush every time um, I'm running out of paint. I just dip back in, dip it in my paint water to get it nice and wet again, and going back in and adding. That's really all this is. Now, I'm probably going to do another one right here. So I'm just going to add in. It really looks aw It's so magical. Ugh painting is so magical. I don't know why I took such a long break from it. There was a very long time. I was watching a video um, earlier this morning that a girl, uh, I have to, I don't, I don't remember her name. I'm so sorry, but her channel kind of inspired me to want to do this painting this morning. But um, there was a very long time where I was so gung-ho about painting and becoming an animationist and um, that kind of took a back seat when um, I was in school. I went, I went and did engineering for five years, got my master's, and um, worked a full-time engineering job for a while. And painting was a uh, second thought. It was something I buried for f for a very long time, and it was always painting was always something that um, I gravitated to. I thought it was just so much fun, and it was a way for me to escape to um, get away from a lot of the sadness and the anxiety that I found myself with, you know, at school, with just family drama and, and all that. So now I'm kind of taking that time to really explore it and come back to it. Right on. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple more details. And then I'm just going to take a break to help to make these stars kind of dry out a little bit and then we'll move on to the next step. Here we go. Dance party over. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to work on the the uh, trees that are, are outlining and going into the galaxy sky. So our trees are fir trees, um, Douglas firs to be more precise. Um, so they kind of have that really cool, very like bushy um, silhouette that goes into the night sky. So it, it looks like you're kind of deep into the woods and just kind of lost in, um, you know, staring up into the sky, which is gorgeous. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our medium brush and we're going to rinse them, get them nice and clean. And I'm going to dip it in my black. So we're gonna be working with black from now on. And I'm gonna make sure I have an even coating of black on my brush. I'm not, I don't wanna have too, too much, but just enough to, to you know, make an outline of my, of my Douglas firs. So the whole thing with, with Douglas firs is that you're looking at two types of brush strokes that you're gonna be repeating over and over again, okay? So the way you're going to start is you're just going to make, I'm going to use like the tip of my brush to go onto my canvas. So I'm just going to make a brush stroke 
going like this and then another brush stroke going like that okay and basically when you work with a Douglas fir the brush strokes get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go down just like so okay um, so it's almost like you're doing eyelashes with your brush and I'm using I'm just using the edge I'm not using like the the flat side of my brush I'm just using the edge and I'm holding on to it like a pencil and I'm just going down and increasing my brush stroke going down just like so so that is the premise of doing a fir tree okay and um, you're just gonna repeat this over and over and over again for all of the fir trees that you have here and the entire bottom here is just covered in black so um, once you have your outline you can just go ahead and just fill this in with your black. Okay. And you can go in and, you know, once it's all filled in and you're like, oh, this looks a little weird, looks a little awkward, um, I'm just going to go ahead and add some more leaves. So this is purely up to you how you want to do this you know I'm just gonna add like a little more of a cone to my tree but basically I'm just gonna keep going and repeat this over and over and over again okay so I'm just gonna re just go fill that in cool huh now this is you know again you can take so much artistic direction with this you can you can go and do you know two more trees and that's your sky um, and just make the rest black or you can make like a bajillion more trees than what I'm laying down here you have my permission to do whatever you would like this is going to be in your house or given to a friend um, or who, whatever you know and this is this is your time this is your time to get creative to just let loose and just play okay that's what we're here to do we're here to play okay so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make the second tree. And the second tree is <laughs> for like this like the first just you do it again. So, let's see. I'm going to make my trees all varying heights. In this case, I want to make this tree, I want to make it a tiny bit smaller. So, I'm going to start like right around here and start with those two brush strokes just like that. And I'm just going to get the brush strokes get bigger and bigger and bigger as it starts going down into the base of the tree. Now you'll notice that some of your tree branches or your fir trees will kind of go into the other and hide the, the leaves. That's okay. That's totally, totally fine. You want to create that illusion that there's a lot of trees here. So getting the overlapped look is definitely going to get you that, um, that feeling of abundance that you're in a very heavily forested area okay and then I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in pretty easy right nothing really much to it I'm just gonna add a little cap here how cool is that huh so it looks like you got a nice little tree nice two little trees just hanging out having a good time and I'm making sure I get the edge of my canvas as well And now we're just gonna rinse and repeat. Here we go. Let's see, I want this one to be, uh, I wanna be taller. So let's start over here. Very cool. I used to be, I used to be a little intimidated by painting trees. Trees can, can look pretty hard and you know what? One thing I did notice when it comes to art, it's all about mindset. If you know, if you believe that it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard. If you tell yourself you're gonna take it step by step and it's just one brush stroke after another, then it turns into a whole different ball game. True story. Okay. 
étape, c'est top. Just like so. Isn't that cool? Just making that really, really cool, heavily forested appearance here. Do another tree here. If your acrylic is not really carrying the way you want it to, all you got to do is just add a bit of water to your brush, and that'll help to carry your acrylic paint. Water and acrylics love each other. So don't forget to, to use your water. Keep your brushes hydrated. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. We'll probably do another one that's a similar size right here. So I'm I'm just spacing it out any way that I that I feel I want to space them out. If I want them further apart, I do them further apart. If I want them more together, I do them more together. It's my call. I can do whatever I want. I'm every woman. It's only me. Man, that is so cool. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but you should try it sometime when you're um, yeah, tooting your own horn. When you're painting, maybe just like have a camera ready and just take a picture while you're in mid progress and you will be surprised by, by how it turns out and what it looks like on screen, you know? It's so cool. I love it. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. So let's see here, what do I want to do now? Um, let's make, let's make a smaller tree. So I'm just gonna like start you right over here actually. Don't you love it when your painting comes to life? Okay, now I'm gonna stop on this train here and then I'm gonna continue onto the rightmost portion of my canvas because I, I really wanna make sure I get the tallest tree here. So I'm gonna create the little peak, the little brush strokes, and then I'm just gonna start and carry my tree down. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's such a beautiful day today. I think I might actually go for a walk and grab my camera and just start taking some inspiring pictures so I can think of ideas for the next painting to paint. I'm starting to, um, I'm getting the fall fever and it's coming up very soon. So I think what I'm going to start doing is start transitioning to more fall paintings, which if you guys want that, comment yes or write on, or if you even have ideas of what specifically you want me to paint so I can show you how to do it, just let me know in the comment section below. Make sure I'm painting on the <laughs> flower I have back here. That'd be unfortunate. Okay, get to the sides. That one's a pretty fat tree right there. <laughs> okay, now let's see. I want to do one that's kind of like up there with him, so I'm just going to do one up here. and add him. Yeah, he looks so puny next to the king of the forest right over here on to, on to his right. <laughs> it's one fat tree. Okay. See, you can, so you can see a, a clear difference with some of my trees. Some of my trees are skinnier. Some of them are big fat kahuntas like this one over here. <laughs> so it's purely up to you how you want to make your tree. So I'm just going to take a look, kind of eyeball it and look at the camera and see if I'm missing anything. Hmm. Uh, let's see. You know what? I want to add, I want to add like a little, a little guy right over here. So I'm just going to put him right here, add his little, little branches. It doesn't matter if you really, you know, we're not able to draw a full tree. You're getting the illusion that there's a lot more trees in here than just the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you're just creating illusions. You know what? I'm probably going to add another half of a tree here just to create that, that sense of abundance there. Right on, huh? Very cool. So now take the time to just kind of go back in and add in those touches. And you can do that with your small brush. So <laughs> I was wondering when we're going to use this guy. Um, so with your small brush, just dip it in your, in your paint water, dip it in your black, and just kind of go in where you feel like you want to add extra little, little leaves. You can go ahead and do that. Adding in a little bit, good. Yeah, yeah, I definitely needed him. He's very invaluable. So I'm just going ahead and adding like little leaves in between the big strokes that I did for the, for the actual tree. So this helps give it a lot more fuller, fatter appearance. Okay. So I'm just going to go for a little peek, a little peek for this guy. right on so I think I'm done so this is I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit Whee! 
<laughs> okay. So here we have it. We have our very own beautiful night sky. And it's overlooking a beautiful galaxy that has a million bajillion stars to them. So everyone, give yourself a pat on the back. You've made it this far and we're able to make this beautiful painting. I want you to know that you should be very, very proud of yourself because I'm very proud of you. So if you have any suggestions, any comments about this painting or future paintings that you would like for me to do, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and like my videos so I can make some future videos that you all like. So once again, my name is Amanda, and thank you so much for spending time with me today. Love ya. Bye.